Dr. John Mathias joins me now. He's with JM Consulting in London. John, you come from a regulatory background, and when we look at the discussion here at the International Energy Forum, people from a very, very diverse background, what did you learn from them, and consequently, what might have you also been able to help them with and give them insight into? Well, my immediate background is regulatory, but in fact, I have a very strong financial industry background. I was a number of years with uh, American Investment Bank and involved in derivatives in commodities, equity, and fixed income, laterally concentrating on commodities. and. Uh, um, so, I, 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 the insights I get from this uh, seminar is essentially that uh, I learn from it. I learn the basic data, I learn what's happening in the market. I also learn about the diversity and, and contradictory views of the various uh, uh, performers and, and participants in these markets. Um, it's very important, and I learned this as a derivative specialist, to, to be in contact with the people who are actually in the physical industry is concerned, in, in this case in energy, in particular in oil and gas. Um, if you don't do that, then you have a, a partial and biased insight, I think, into the whole uh, nexus of how um, these markets operate and what the real issues are. Now, of course, this is a time when a lot of investment has come off the market and possibly many of the big players are finding it difficult to get financing as well. There's a lot of risk involved in the industry and there's a danger sometimes to it that things have stagnated perhaps and this is really no good for the industry at all. What can you know, bring that, you know, reassurance back to the financial markets that actually this is still a solid industry at the moment to be investing in? Well, the problem with the financial markets is they do suffer from a herd instinct and it's going to take some time to rectify that. It's a, it's a bit like investing actually in oil wells and oil, oil rigs. You know, there is a cycle here and there's a delay here. Um, similarly with the, um, the, the credit process and particularly the financing, the underscoring of the, uh, of the oil and gas industries. I think what's going to change this is more stability in the market in a clearer direction. Um, what's impacting the market at the moment, of course, is the uh, reduced revenues they're getting from this particular industry sector and indeed from other commodity industry sectors, not just energy. Um, but, you know, that will change over time. Um, uh, while prices remain relatively high in the, in the oil industry, for example, then I think the banks were happy to finance that. But at the moment, obviously, with the U.S. Uh, situation being different from, from the conventional oil situation, whereby you have many more small producers, um, you know, the, the, the financing break-evens are not being met, and therefore the banks are pulling out in the short term. Uh, I hate to say this, but banks can be very much fair-weathered friends. Indeed, and this is what not what the industry needs in one way at the moment, because they have to look for the long term. Indeed, this being a very long term industry, do you think that the, the regulators, given the state of the industry and the prolonged uh, drop in the oil price and therefore the impact on the economy, that are the regulators perhaps looking at the oil industry now maybe with a, a keener eye? Um, not because of that. The process that I was involved with was actually the benchmarking process, which was started out for political reasons, I think, largely, if I may say so, I won't go into great detail on that, but uh, uh, it was looking into the price reporting agencies, and that was the process that went on for four or five years. That issue has largely been bedded down now. Um, there have been remarkable improvements in, in data, um, but I think it, it provided the cultural context for, for re-examining the role of energy and the role of energy uh, media communication. Uh, so. Um, you know, we, ha we have seen some impact from that, but I wouldn't say that's a primary motivation. Do you think the role of the International Energy Forum over the years has strengthened, and perhaps here we are at this second round table, the thought leaders uh, gathering, and indeed a lot of very interesting people who are in that room, and indeed people here who've been here for the last two days? Yes, absolutely. And uh, my, my only regret is that, you know, there are not more regulators who come to these events, um, because I've always believed being an industry man primarily, and then a regulator secondly, that uh, regulators need to know much more about the structures of the, of the subjects which they regulate. Um, and you do get the top people at these events uh, and they provide insights. It's always fascinating when they're contradictory. It's sometimes fascinating to see the performance of some of these people in public. It's almost theatrical at times. But you know, they do provide enormous expertise. And for me as a person who's relatively uh, I would say ill-equipped in this business compared with some of the, the, the leaders of the industry, the oil and gas industries. Uh, I find it fascinating and, and, and it's a great uh, learning exercise.